I'd like to welcome uh, student athletes from the University of Texas to my immediate right, forward Brock Cunningham, Marcus Carr, the man in the middle, and Timmy Allen, our far right. At this time, we take questions. Please raise your hand. We're going to go on the right side on the aisle. Identify yourself, your affiliation. Thank you. Craig Way, Longhorn Radio Network. Uh, Timmy, can you give us an update on how you feel and, and readiness for tomorrow? 100% ready to go. Um, no question mark. I'm going full full speed. Right behind him, on the right. Uh, Marcus, uh, Zach Dimmitt, Longhorns Country. Uh, Marcus, what did you learn about yourself uh, from last year uh, playing this tournament? And are we going to see another half-court shot or, I guess, like three-fourths shot? Um, what I learned about myself last year playing here, I would just say it's it's fun. It's a surreal experience, and um, looking forward to it again. And um, hopefully there won't be a need for a three-quarter court shot, but I wouldn't be opposed to making one at all. Questions on the left side, Karen? Yeah, Nick Moyle with the San Antonio Express News. Brock, um, you know, obviously so much has been made of the job that Rodney has done with you guys this year. Um, just if you can kind of maybe take us back to that December 12th day when you guys didn't, you know, there was so much uncertainty around. What did what did Rodney kind of do to, to bring you guys together and keep you focused on the task at hand that night? Um, he was a calming voice in a, you know, in a weird situation that morning, and he did an amazing job. But the older guys on the team did a good job of leading – the rest of the team and saying that there's a task at hand, winning games, and that's the most important thing. You know, so many upperclassmen in a situation like that, guys that have been through a lot before, you know, how much did that help? And just having your voice, Timmy's voice, Marcus? It helped a lot. You know, we've got grown men in this room that have lived lived life outside of basketball. So a situation like that was, you know, wasn't anything unheard of. and We just knew we had to carry on and uh, keep playing games. Guys, are going to stay on the right side here. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, Marcus Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Marcus, how much pressure is there on the higher seeds when a lot of times the fans are rooting for the underdog and and just you got to kind of play your way into the tournament and and how do you fight nerves that sort of thing? Um, I wouldn't say not necessarily. We look at it as pressure. Um, I don't. You know, we respect our opponent fully. We understand how good of a team Colgate is and. Um, we're preparing for them just like we would prepare any, you know, any Big 12 team. So I don't feel like there's going to be any pressure um, in terms of that. We don't take them lightly at all. And the tournament is the tournament. Every single team who's here, you know, deserves to be here. They're all good teams. Um, so coming into the game, we're, we're prepared to, you know, battle and compete with them at the highest level. Um, I don't think it's pressure. I think we're preparing for this game as we prepared all season long. And um, yeah, sometimes the crowd does go for the underdog, but you know, that's just it is what it is. Other questions? Okay, we're going to go on the left side, then we're coming across the aisle to the right. Well, go ahead with the hat on on the left there. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Brock. Obviously, sorry to bring it up, but you were you were involved in that you know three fourteen upset a few years ago. Obviously, you know what the pressure holds with being a being a higher seed. But I guess what did you personally maybe maybe take with that game moving forward? And then just as an aside, you know, what do you think about um, the success that Shock has had at Marquette this year? And have you have you been in touch with him at all? Uh, going back to that uh, Abilene Christian game, I've learned a lot. You know, the the flow and the kind of the energy within March Madness, and how they will root for the under seed, especially uh, when Texas is that top seed. And then uh, talking about Shock, he's done an awesome job. I haven't uh, gotten the chance to speak to him, but it's been awesome to see him resurrect that Marquette program and uh, win a bunch of games this season. Over on the right, guys. Uh, Brock, going back to the ACU loss, you said after the Big 12 tournament that uh, you described it as being a terrible loss. Um, what are, and you were like talking to the, t uh, the team about uh, learning from that because you experienced it. Uh, what are some things you've been telling them like leading up to uh, Thursday um, about like lessons you've learned uh, since that game? Uh, since that game, you know, we won the Big 12 tournament uh, that year and then thought we couldn't be touched. And then this year, winning the Big 12 tournament, that first practice back in Austin, we spoke about the importance of living in the moment. We won the Big 12. We'll have it for the rest of our lives. We're moving on to something bigger and trying to catch bigger fish. So just uh, living where our feet are and preparing for the next game. Go over to the left. Yeah, uh, Timmy. 
Uh, Y'all got a taste of winning in the NCAA tournament a little bit last year, and you got so much experience coming back. Can you talk about how hungry this team is and kind of how y'all kind of always had the big picture in mind, even though you were, you know, playing them each game as they came? Yeah, um, going back to last year, um, just to get that first win and get our feet wet in the tournament was good. Um, coming back the second year, we always had big goals in mind, cutting down nets. Um, we got one so far, and we're, we're not looking to stop. Um, we got big goals in mind, and we know that starts with Colgate. Um, like Marcus said, it's a great team. Um, we're not looking past anybody. We're not worried about any game other than our first game. Um, we're staying locked in and we're staying focused on the things we can control. Um, our game plan, our preparation, and um, our intent and our mindset going into the game. Um, just preparing as best as we can, holding each other accountable along the way, and um, just being ready for whatever. Um, March Madness shakes um, different ways, so um, just being ready and being prepared. Question in the back row. Yes, Jonathan Thomas, KXA, and Timmy, um, going back, sorry to do it one more time, to last year, you know, the last game you played in the tournament, you know, didn't go the way you probably wanted to go. For you personally, how much did that motivate you this year? And, you know, how much did you think about that if you got another chance to get to the tournament that you'd make the best of it? Um, you know, in life, you don't always get second chances, and I'm here um, my second time, so I'm obviously looking to capitalize. Um, as far as that game... I feel like I've, I've learned what I needed to learn, and I've taken from it what I needed to take from it. But I think I'd be remiss if I didn't let it go at this point. Um, so I'm looking past that, but it's new opportunities ahead. Um, I got the greatest teammates in the world. Um, I'm really blessed with great guys and great staff around me who just build me up and encourage me, especially even getting through that injury, um, just staying positive. And, I mean, they got the business done in KC without me, so it ain't no problem. But, um, nah, um, just just – Forgetting, moving on, but learning and progressing forward. Okay, we're going to take a Zoom call. Mallory? This question comes from Corey Mose. Corey, when you're ready. How you doing? Corey Mose, KB News. Uh, I got two for Marcus and Timmy. Uh, first off, Marcus, uh, I know a lot of things have been talked about, the closest of this team from the situation back in December happening. But the way I, when I've talked to you all throughout this year, this kind of closeness began in the summer. So can you kind of just describe how not only that bond that was created so early, but how that's affected y'all to this point now? Yeah, like you said, I think a lot of people like to go back to December uh, when it comes to our team just because of, you know, what transpired. But this group and the specialness of our team and our bond, like you said, did start in the summertime. Uh, it started with you know, us working together, us getting through whatever we had to get through in the summertime, working through man's mornings, getting through those tough early practices where it was really just about competing against each other and making each other better. And I feel like ever since that time in the summertime and everybody established that, hey, we're all working towards this one goal. And once we all decided that and we had the same mindset as a team, I think, you know, the sky's been the limit for us ever since then. Was there a follow-up on that, Mallory? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I got one more. Timmy, I just wanted to ask you, from being on the sideline during the Big 12 tournament, watching from that, from the bench, what did you learn and what did you see from your team on a different perspective? Um, I don't know. Because you could say, like, I learned that my teammates could go, but I knew that. And it's just amazing to watch them, like, the camaraderie we have and um, the selflessness and um, how we're not worried about – who gets it done? It's just about getting it done. And I think that's the big picture for us. Um, I had a thrill of being the best cheerleader I could be on the sideline, but I'm more thrilled to be back on the biggest stage. So it's a blessing. But um, I'm blessed with great teammates, man. They went out there and got it done. Guys like Terrio, Double D, stepping up. Brock, obviously. Marcus going to do what he do. But I'm blessed with great teammates and a great staff around me. I'm going to go on the left side here shooting problems down the stretch until the championship game. Was it part of that just fatigue? Because, you know, so much has been on your shoulders this whole year. And does Colgate style remind you of anybody you played this year? Uh, I think anytime you get down towards, you know, the end of the season, going through a grueling season, especially in a conference like the Big 12, there is no other conference like it. So, you know, just playing those games each and, each and every night, there's definitely a bit of wear and tear that, you know, comes down on your body. But um, at the same time, it's basketball. You know, you can't always control whether the ball goes in the basket. And, you know, you can say I had a, 
a shooting slump or a woe or whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, I was really just focused on, you know, making sure that we got wins. And, you know, if my shots aren't falling, then I'm going to try and be an even, an even better distributor. I'm going to try and affect the game even more on the defensive end. So as well as my teammates, they told me keep shooting. Coach and staff told me keep shooting. They never, you know, lacked confidence in me or anything like that. So, you know, it was good to just keep going out there and keep trying to win games. And um, as far as Colgate, Trying to think, not many. I mean, they're the best shooting team in the country, so it's hard for me to say, you know, there's anybody else like them. But um, in terms of preparation, I think our staff has been doing a great job of letting us know what kind of team they are. We've been watching a lot of film, and like I said, we respect them. We know they're a great team, obviously, coming out of their league, and definitely respect their ability to shoot the ball, and we're going to have to adjust our defense to that. We have time for two more questions. Any other questions out there? You want on the right side? We'll close out with this question. And yeah, Marcus, obviously, you know, the, the, the guards have really driven the offense, you know, all year long, whether it's, you know, you, Tyrese, uh, Jabari, Terrio, you know, Timmy getting going. Um, how big has the emergence of Dylan Dessou been for you guys, just as a guy who can either be a pick and pop, pick and roll? He's just got that little 15 footer push shot. Um, how much does that, like, kind of open up the floor for you all now that he's really going? It's huge, definitely huge for us. I mean, you've seen the kind of offensive power he has you know throughout the big 12 tournament really came through but you know in little moments throughout the year we've we've seen that from him and we know what he can do obviously practicing with him every day we know what he's capable of so we're all just super happy to you know see him shine that through in the big 12 tournament and you know definitely carry that through here um and then it, it really just speaks to the you know the diversity of our team a lot of different guys can attack you a lot of different guys can score the ball it's just you know you're kind of gonna have to pick your poison that night so like he said, we're, I'm, I'm blessed with a bunch of great teammates who are all very talented and even better people. So happy to see Dylan get his groove and looking for him to keep it going. Our final question on the right. Go ahead. Uh, for Marcus or for any of you guys, uh, Chris Beard was introduced as the Ole Miss head coach, um, I believe, yesterday. And uh, you guys obviously built a relationship with him. Um, what were you all's thoughts on, uh, on that? Start with Brock, then we'll go on down to Marcus. And Go ahead, Brian. Uh, best, best of luck to Beard and the uh, University of Mississippi. Yeah, just wishing Coach, you know, best wishes um, in his new start and for that program. Likewise. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Best Thank of luck tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Rev. Coach up here in a second. Pleased to welcome uh, interim coach Rodney Terry, University of Texas Longhorns, the number two seed in the Midwest region. Automatic qualifier after winning the Big 12 Conference Tournament Championship. Texas has a 26-8 record. This will mark the 37th overall NCAA appearance by Texas. The Longhorns play the number 15 seed Colgate in a 625 tip-off on Thursday. Coach, welcome to Des Moines. Your thoughts on your matchup? Okay. Uh, no, thank you guys for being here. Um, wow, we got a, a really tough matchup with Colgate. Um, Matt very, has done a great job with this program there. Uh, I think this is a four straight NCAA uh, appearance uh, in a row. And uh, older team, a lot of guys have played in, a, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, they played in a lot of big games um, over the past you know, few years. Um, this season, beat, a, you know, beat Syracuse this year at Syracuse. Um, you got to get a team that's going to take care of the basketball, play with a great pace, one of the best shooting teams in the country. Um, you know, can put a lot of pressure on us defensively to get back and, and sit down and guard. Uh, but uh, a really, really good ball club that uh, we're going to have a great challenge with. 
This time we'll take questions. Please raise your hand. We have a microphone holder. I'm going to go on the right side, Coach, in the back. RT, uh, Zach Dimmitt, Longhorns Country. Uh, you mentioned the recent uh, appearances in the NCAA tournament for Colgate. Um, how much more difficult is it uh, to avoid the upset when they have so much experience? They haven't won a game in the tournament, but they've been here. They know what the environment's like. Uh, how much more difficult does that make it uh, for preparation? Well, they're not going to be intimidated by us for sure. They've been in this environment before, and they have the experience uh, as a team. Um, I think I think the thing for us, you know, we know that this is a, a really, really good shooting team here, you know, and uh, we're going to have to do a great job of really trying to defend the three-point line and keep these guys off the glass and have a really good, you know, uh, urgency to get back on defense because they play with a really good pace of play on offense as well. Uh, just a really, really good team. I mean, but for us, we feel like we've been battle-tested. We played in the Big 12, the best league in the country, and every night you had to bring your A game, and we're going to have to bring our A game. We know in the, in the first round here against a, a well-coached team in Colgate. So for us, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of just the next game up on the schedule in terms of another big game. Every game has been a big game for us uh, throughout the course of, uh, of conference play as well. You stay on the right side on the aisle here. Craig White, Longhorn Radio Network. Uh, RT, the, uh, I think Marcus was asked if Colgate – reminded him of anybody you faced? Uh, uh, let me put the question. Is it, do they resemble anybody that you guys have faced this season? Well, I think for us, you know, if, you, if I liken anybody to, to them, even in our league in Big 12 play, Baylor puts so much pressure on you shooting the basketball at every position. Uh, and, and their guards could really score the ball. Uh, Colgate's guards are really good. They can really shoot the basketball and score the basketball. Um, Creighton was, you know, really good offensively as well and played with a great pace. So I'd, I'd say those two probably opponents we had this year uh, would be guys that we really had to defend the three-point line with, um, get back in transition with, just put a lot of pressure on you defensively. And, and uh, that's what Colgate does to you. They, they really make you have to sit down and guard and, and play really hard on defense. Question on the left side, Coach. Yeah, uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman, Rodney. Rodney. You know, obviously swept through the tournament and played very loose and, you know, well-flowing and everything like that. Now you're in a winner-go-home thing. Do Anything you, you do as a head coach to keep them loose? I don't know if you have poker nights or go bowling or do you do anything special to stay loose? Well, I don't, I don't think you do anything special. I just think I, I think a lot of times uh, teams, uh, once you get in a routine, you know, we've been in a really pretty good routine and, and groove uh, the way we kind of do things on a daily basis. And, uh, um, you know, I, I encourage our guys when they're doing really good things and uh, try to keep, you know, a really positive attitude uh, and approach in everything that we do. Um, even when we experience some adversity, we, we try not to be too negative with our guys. And I think if you have that kind of approach and, and great spirit about yourself every day in, in life in general, I, I think you'll be – you know, uh, you be where you need to be. And I always tell our guys, you know, pressure is if you had to go out, you know, and, and do something that you hadn't worked on and prepared for. You know, and we're going to be prepared for a really good Colgate team. And, uh, you know, all we have to do is go play the game and get out there and really get lost in competing at a high level. It's like no different than what they've got to do in the classroom. If you go in and take an exam, it's a lot of pressure on you. If you go in there and you're not prepared. But if you're prepared, you go in there and take that exam, man. You just knock that exam right out. So, you know, preparation trumps pressure. You just go play. Question in the back on the left. Rodney, uh, Dave Campbell, Associated Press. Uh, clearly, players have a pretty strong bond. Um, why do they get along so well? What What's the source of the chemistry that you have? Well, I think that started this summer. You know, I don't think you start that during the season. Uh, that went way back to the to the very beginning when guys got on campus and we spent a lot of time, you know, encouraging our guys to spend a lot of time with themselves off the court. And it uh, wasn't really, a, you know, to be honest, you know, coach-driven. It was more player-driven in terms of those guys doing different activities and spending time with one, other, one another off the court. And uh, I think when you're able to do that, that carries over into your, to the start of your season. And, and as you get into the season, I think you, uh, you, you become really unselfish teammates and great teammates. Question on the right side and the back on the aisle. Jonathan Thomas, a KXAN, a coach. Uh, you know, you guys have such a veteran team. How has that impacted, you know, the way you prepared them this time around, you know, with all the experience that they have? Well, we do have some guys that have played in the NCAA tournament, and uh, 
Uh, I think the thing we've tried to do with our team, though, over the last month of the season, we really tried to play March basketball. We tried to play with the urgency that you're going to have to play with uh, this time of year, understanding that you can't give 20 minutes away. First four minutes, second four minutes, third four minutes, you've got to try to win every round, and you've got to not play perfect, but you've got to have an urgency about you in terms of how hard you play. You know, you give 20 minutes away in the NCAA tournament, it's going to be really hard for you to make that up. You know, so I think the thing we try to do is just, you know, we've tried to work every game for 40 minutes and understand you're going to have to play from the time that horn, you know, goes off the start to the time that that horn goes off to end the ball game. But you're working the game the entire time. Coach, we're going to take a Zoom call. Mallory? We have a question from Corey Mose. Corey, when you're ready. How you doing, Coach? Corey Mose, KVU News. Uh, just wanted to talk to you about how some of your guys just mentioned how uh, playing as playing against an underdog, you know, people want to root against the favorites in the NCAA tournament. But has there any been has it been the type of similarity of just throughout the season playing and coaching at UT um, and just being a part of the Texas brand and people rooting against y'all in general, you know, everywhere y'all go? Is that some type of similarity, or do y'all see anything like that? Well, Corey, that's a, that's a great question. Um... You know, I think, again, when, I don't think of Colgate as an underdog. Colgate can play with anybody in this tournament. I mean, they, they're well coached. Uh, I think they're a great team. I think, uh, you know, anytime you score 80 points a game a night, I mean, you, you beat anybody in the country on any given day. Uh, so I wouldn't, first off, you know, call Colgate an underdog. I mean, they're, they're a really, really good ball club. Um, so, you know, do we get everybody's best game at Texas? Um, Man, I don't think we I don't think we're sneaking up on anybody at Texas. I think everybody's ready to play us. Um, I think our guys understand um, when they signed up to play at Texas that they were gonna they're gonna get everybody's best game, uh, and and I think they uh, they embraced it. They embrace it, and uh, I think we played at a very high level consistently all year long. We have five minutes left in this session. We're gonna go to the left side on the aisle. Uh, Nick Mole, San Antonio Express News. Hey, Rodney. Um, I know you've been coaching with a little bit of a heavy heart this year. You know, you mentioned how close you were with your father. You know, I'm just curious, you know, what kind of an influence was he on you and maybe what kind of lessons did you kind of take from him and carry with you through life? Oh, Nick, that's a great question. Um, you know, my father was a, uh, a high school basketball coach, football coach for over 40 years. And uh, I just think the, uh, I think of the impact that he made on so many young lives and people that he always interacted with and, the way he carried himself. I mean, people love my dad, you know, and uh, just by the way he carried himself and a lot of his former players, you know, the respect they had for him after they finished playing for him. You know, I think he inspired me to want to be a coach and to continue to work with young people and, and hopefully have impact on young people's lives. And, um, you know, I just I learned so much from him in that regards. And uh, I think the last thing I would say uh, in regards to that, I think he always saw me um, – in a bigger light than even I saw myself, you know, and uh, he saw me doing the things that I'm doing right now at this level right now, even before I thought I could be at this level and, and believed in me that much. He said, you're a high major coach. You're a guy that, that can do exactly what those other guys are doing, and, and you should have one of those jobs. He'd always, you know, different jobs would open up, and he'd say, hey, you know, you should be, you should be trying to get that job. You're ready for that job. That's your job. But, but he always saw more in me in terms of the, biggest, the bigger picture and uh, really instilled me to, to dream big. We're going to stay on the left side, Coach. Uh, you know, Rodney, we ask you a lot about the job and the permanent job. And now that March is here and the stakes go up, uh, do you feel in, in some ways, I know you're all about the team, but are you also coaching for, for the permanent job this month? You know what, Kurt? Yeah, I, um, I, I, I've – I've continued to do what, what we've done all year long and, and, uh, and uh, just work the process. You know, live where your feet are, live in the moment, enjoy this journey right now. Um, you know, we all don't want it to end. Everybody in the NCAA tournament, we all want to continue to, to, to ride this journey. And i and, uh, got a special group I work with all year long, special staff I work with all year long. And I've really just, to be honest with you, just stayed the course in terms of working with them every day and enjoying being with them every day. We had a great practice this morning already. And, um, you know, I just really haven't given a whole lot of thought to it, to be honest with you, in terms of what we're doing. You know, I just want this team to continue to, to play and continue to go as far as we can go with this group. Any final questions out there? Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Best of luck thank tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.
We will have uh, student athletes from Texas A&M starting at 205. Reminder, Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference and the NCAA digital.